It has been in the works for years, and tonight we're counting down to the opening of the first span of the new Inner Belt Bridge. Good evening, I'm Lee Jordan. And I'm Chris Flanagan, live at the Ontario Street ramp of the new bridge, which only one of two ways you can access the bridge from downtown. We're told now the bridge should be up and running by Monday morning. And some major changes to traffic patterns on I-90 you need to know about. Good morning, Cleveland traffic anchor Jackie Zabelski will be here in a moment to tell us all about it. But first, ground broken today on the $566 million Interbelt Bridge project nearly three years ago. Today, the westbound span officially dedicated the bridge, the George V. Voinovich Bridge this morning, marking the complete of phase one of this big project and before today's dedication the public getting a chance to walk along the new bridge before cars take it over. News Channel 5's Paul Kiska was here today for the ribbon cutting and the walk and Paul not just dignitaries saw a whole lot of dignitaries of course out yes. here but we saw a lot of characters as well. <laughs> we sure did Chris we saw a Cape Crusader out on the bridge more on that in a second but as you know these traffic headaches they're not over just yet but with all the exciting things happening in downtown Cleveland this bridge connects Cleveland to a very bright future. Pride, excitement, and opportunity all created by this new bridge, these new lanes. One, two, three. People put their feet on brand new concrete that will soon carry 140,000 vehicles in and out of Cleveland daily. Others checked out the new bridge with baby strollers, segways, even roller skates. I've skated down uh, Broadway in New York City and all, all unusual places and uh, being able to skate on this brand new concrete is, is, uh, is great. A great day for pictures, even a caped crusader. Suzanne says she travels Ohio spreading a message of kindness. I love it. It's, what do I think of the city too? This is my first trip to Cleveland and I absolutely love it. It's got a lot of history to it. It's, it's a wonderful city. 500 workers high above the Cuyahoga worked around the clock in any weather Lake Erie winds could throw at them and no serious injuries. We put safety in front of anything that we do, um, especially with the uh, amount of iron and the amount of concrete we've poured and the technical things we've done. Some of the most complex th things that have been done in this city in a very long time. The bridge named after one of Ohio's most distinguished statesmen, George Voinovich, who drove the first car, 64 Ford Galaxy, on the new bridge. A moment five years removed from these pictures taken of the old Interbelt Bridge, rust and safety concerns now in the past, left in the rearview mirror. This bridge is going to be around uh, for all, all the pension purposes for maybe a hundred years. You know, the old bridge, ODOT couldn't plow it because there were so many expansion joints on the old Interbelt Bridge, they would rip those up if they plowed it. So they used a lot of rock salt. That led to some of the rusting problems on the Interbelt Bridge. Well, Chris, this new bridge, guess what? Only two expansion joints, so they can use snow plows. You're going to notice a huge difference on that bridge in snowy weather. It's going to be a lot better than the old Interbelt Bridge. Yeah, no doubt. And Paul, they were supposed to open the bridge tomorrow. We're told it's yeah. been delayed now, possibly they want to have it open at least by Monday morning. That's right. They were going to try and open it sometime tomorrow. I was talking to workers and some ODOT officials earlier today up on the bridge. Uh, the, the painters, they still have to get those traffic stripes down, the traffic right. striping. They need temperatures over 45 degrees. That didn't happen today. Right. Tomorrow in the 50s, so they'll get that work done, some other finishing touches, and the bridge should be good to go perhaps Sunday or Monday, as you said. Yeah. All right, Paul, thanks a lot. A lot okay. of characters out there. Absolutely. Thanks, Paul. All right. Well, ODOT had already planned on changing up traffic patterns when the new span opens by Monday morning, but they just announced some bigger changes that you need to know about. Let me bring in Good Morning Cleveland traffic anchor Jackie Zabelski. Jackie, a lot going on, a lot that people need to know about. We're on your side telling them about that. Yes, a lot of changes for your weekend commute, but important to know, even though the opening of these ramps is delayed, the closing of the ramps that are supposed to take place tonight will still happen at 8 p.m. So that's the closure of the East 14th Street ramp to 90 westbound and the closure of the Ontario exit ramp from 90 westbound. Those close at 8 p.m. tonight. Now, also happening tonight at at midnight, we are going to see construction work closing off 90 in both directions completely in between 77 and 490. So that's the entire old inner belt bridge that will be in effect until 6 a.m. Monday morning. So you'll have to use 77 and 490 to get around this weekend. All right, Jackie, thanks a lot. You know, it may seem like a lot of headaches uh, getting around here, but really these two bridges are needed. The old bridge uh, here 
more than 50 years old and it really past its expected lifespan will be on your side of course throughout the second phase of this new bridge and coming up at 613 i will take you inside the making of this brand new bridge and show you how every little detail means so much for your safety 